the heart of Elvendom on earth, realm of the Lord Celeborn, and of Galadriel, Lady of Light. All right, people, it is time for another episode of the Army Focus series, and today I am gonna walk you through the Lothlorien list as well as the Fangorn and the Misty Mountains list, and then next time I will finish off the good armies from the Lord of the Rings book with Castle Doom and the Wanderers in the Wild. So hopefully today the audio will be a lot better, because I have changed my mic, so hopefully l less of this humming and just an overall much clearer sound. Let's look forward and today we're going to talk about Lothlorien, which is home of the race of Sylvan Elves. The great woodland realm of Lothlorien has long resisted the taint of evil. Lying on the western banks of the Anduin, the river that is, Lothlorien spans the spaces between the golden Malorn trees and can trace its history back to the very earliest of times. Unlike the twisted forests of Mirkwood, the home of Legolas and uh, Thranduil, etc., the boughs of Lothlorien provide a sanctuary of peace and healing, a place where only the closest allies of the elves are welcome. Within the heart of Lothlorien lies the great tree city of Caras Galadriel, home to Galadriel, the Lady of Light, and the Lord Celeborn, uh, her hubby. Galadriel is a mighty sorcerer, an elf of immense and terrifying power. There are few in Middle-earth who would dare to stand against her. She is the keeper of Nenya, one of the three elven rings of power, and has ever opposed the machinations of the Dark Lord. So, army composition. This army may include Galadriel, Celeborn, Haldir. Haldir is a guy who we see die at Helm's Deep, but he wasn't really there in the books, but never mind. Rumil, Galadrim captains, Woodulf captains, Galadrim stormcallers, Galadrim warriors, Galadrim knights, gods of the Galadrim court, Woodulf warriors, and Woodulf sentinels. And then we have the army bonus. They say a great sorcerer lives in these woods. Say that a great sorcerer lives in these woods. Friendly Lorien models gain the resistant to magic special rule, so they roll an extra die when they are trying to resist spells with the use of will points. Can be situationally very useful, obviously. Against some armies, it's very just do nothing. Then we have the heroes of Lothlorien, and starting obviously with the Lady of Light standing by her a watery uh, mirror here, hailing her friends uh, and the hero of legend for 130 points. It's not all that expensive. She has three might, six will with an asterisk, and three fate. She is a decent fighter as well. She has only one attack though, but she has fight six, but with a, a meager strength of three. Three wounds though, and seven courage, so she won't really fail those courage tests anytime soon. He is unarmed though, but wears the ring of Nenya, not the ring of Nenya, ring, the ring Nenya, which has the same passive rule that the other two rings says that it allows her to re-roll her dice when using fate points. She can do heroic resolve, shandling and defense. She is primarily a spellcaster though, and you can take the Mirror of Galadriel for 25 points. And it has the passive rule that it is a heavy object with a defense of 8 and 3 wounds. If it is deployed... sorry. It is deployed within 6 of Galadriel at the start of the game for scenarios that require both armies to move on to the board. Any models within Galadriel's war but may carry the hero onto the board. During the end phase of each turn, one friendly hero model within 6 inches may restore the fate to its starting value. She causes terror and is a woodland creature. And if you include Galadriel, you may upgrade any number of Galadriel warriors in her warband to be Galadriel guard for 1 points each. And then they will have courage 6 instead of five, I guess. She has the passive rule, the Lady of Lothlorien. A sorceress of incredible skill, Galadriel can wield powerful magics in defense of Lothlorien. She may expend a single point of will each turn without reducing her own store. So basically the same thing as uh, Saruman, for example, has. She can cast Blinding Light on the 2+, plus Blessing of the Valar. The Valar is the gods in the Tolkien mythos, if you don't know. Uh, it has a range of 12 and it's cost on the 3+. Plus. She can cost Immobilize. Uh, on a 3+, plus, a range of 12, and Command as well for uh, on a 4+. Plus. 130 points are fairly cheap, but if you take the Mirror, it will go all the way up to 155, but still not all that expensive. Quite a great spell coster for uh, 
fairly cheap points, and she won't really die anytime soon with three might, three will, and three wounds. And especially with that rerolled fate with the ring there. And then we have her uh, hobby here, Kelleborn. 30 points as well. He is more of the fighty type. He has a fight value of 6, the same as um, Galadriel there, but strength of 4. Peg up there, but uh, 3 attacks and 3 3 3 for a rogue, so a very solid uh, stat line there. He is unarmed though, but he can take an elven made hand and half sword for 5 points and a shield for 5 points. And you can also take the heavy armor for 10 points to increase that defense to a 6 and even a 7 if you take the shield. You can do heroic shadowing strike in defense. And if you include him, you may upgrade any number of god warriors to be god and god. Uh, so, same thing as uh, Galadriel there. Also causes terror and it's a woodland creature and he has that Lord of the West uh, active special rule that we saw uh, Elrond, uh, Glorfindel, Gilgalad have in the uh, Rivendell on list. So uh, one single reroll on the to hit in duels and one single reroll on the to wound when uh, delivering strikes. And then he has the Lord of Lore in active rule as well. Which means that his standfast is 12 rather than 6. He is also a spellcaster and can cast Aura of Command on a 2 plus, Enchanted Blades on a range of 6 on a 3 plus, Immobilize with a range of 12 and 3 plus. So, quite a potent fighter if you take those options uh, to have the shield and heavy armor and the hen Elven Maid hand and have some. Elven Maid uh, means that you can uh, have an easier time to win ties. So instead of winning on 4 to 6, you will win on 3 to 6. Unless your opponent also has an elven made weapon. And the hand and a half sword means that you have to declare if you're using a two-handed or one-handed uh, during the uh, attack roll. Next up we have Rumil. And, and I'm just going to say also that Caliborn is uh, not a hero of dungeon, he is a hero of valor. So you can take 15 dudes or a dudes in his warband. Then we have Rumil for 85 points, hero of fortitude, so 12 bodies in his warband. He has a fight of 6, just like Caliborn, but only 2 attacks and 2 wounds. 3 might, but only 1 will, 1 fate. So kind of standard named captain stat there. Heavy armor included, uh, also shield included for that uh, defense 7. Also has that elven made sword, not ten and a half sword, but just a regular sword and he can do heroic defense. He's actually the brother of Haldir and like his sibling he's tirelessly protects the borders of the Goldenwood. Whilst Haldir excels with the use of a bow, Rumil is an expert swordsman. His skills with the blade are renowned across Middle-earth and he's a Agility and lightning fast reflexes have made Rumil a fiat foe. And because of that, he has the active swift parry rules. The reflexes possessed by Rumil make him one of the most skilled warriors of the race of elves. Rumil may force one enemy model in the same fight as him to re roll a single d6 for the dual roll. This must be done before any might points are used. So, kind of cool, unique rule there. So, yeah, uh, we have a fantasy model as well. And he can take an elven cloak uh, as an option. Then we have Haldir, his brother, then. Uh, one of the most trusted captains and skilled archers in the North Florian. He's tasked with defending the woodland borders. And he has a fight of six, uh, two attacks, two wounds, three one one for heroics. He can do heroic accuracy, strike, and strength. And has an elven main hand and half sword included in his war gear. And he can have uh, the option to take heavy armor, elf bow, and elven cloak. Has the expert shot and woodland creature special rule. And he has the passive rule, allies till the end. An alliance once existed between elves and men. We come to honor that allegiance. Fighting alongside Aragorn and the Rohirrim at the Helm Steep, Haldir has sworn an oath to protect the leaders of men. He is counted as being a range of a banner and automatically passes all courage tests if he's within 12 of either Aragorn or Theodor. So it, it totally separate from the book lore, but uh, a very cool thematic thing from the movies there. Uh, one final blow, active rule. A resolute elven warrior Haldir will not go down without a fight, so we see him die in the movies, kind of really gruesome death. He takes like a big orc axe to the... between his shoulder blades. Uh, if Haldir is slain in close combat, he may immediately make one strength four strike on each model that was engaged with him in the fatal fight. Yeah, might just do, not do any mu very much, but it's a cool kind of li little special rule. He's uh, 70 points hero of fortitude, so 50 points cheaper than his brother. Uh, but you need to take more stuff to buff him up um, to be equally good. The heavy armor isn't included here. So. Then we have Galadrim Captain, which is just a standard captain for 2-1-1 heroics, 6 fights, 4 strength, 2 attacks, 2 wounds. 
uh, with a heavy armor and elven made hand and absolutely included in the war gear and the heroic march kind of a standard uh, captain heroic action there uh, can be upgraded with an armored horse and elf bow and a shield and has the expert rider fleet foot and woodland creature special rules Next up, we have Wood Elf Captains. 65 points, Heroes of Fortitude, 2-1-1 two, two, one, one as well there for Heroics. 6 uh, Fight, 2 attacks, 2 wounds, so pretty much the same. Has the Elven Maid Sword and Elven Cloak included, but no armor, so only 4 defense. Uh, elf Bow, Throwing Daggers and Wood Elf Spears are options for them to take. And they have the Woodland Creature Special Rule. So not all that tanky, but at least 2 wounds and a fake point. Then we have Galadrim Stormcallers, which are pretty much very similar to the the uh, Stormcallers that we have in the Rivendell, Rivendell army. They are a minor hero, so only six people in their warbands. One might, three will, and one fate, two wounds, one attack, five fight, and defense four, the armor and elven made sword and staff included in the war gear. And they can take the heroic shadowing action and are uh, counted as being woodland creatures and have the powers of nature uh, passive rule. If when a casting test is made, the storm caller rolls a natural six and one or more dice, then the will points spent in casting the magical powers are returned to the storm caller's store of will upon completion of the effect of the magical power. So you can kind of go broke uh, and, and roll three dice just to fish for that six, and then you will not be spending any of those three uh, will during the casting roll. So it's kind of a risk and reward there. Then we have the Call Winds 12 uh, range spell uh, on a 3 plus and Enchanted Blades at range 6 and a 4 plus. So very similar to the Rivendell uh, casters. Then we have the Warriors of Lothlorien for 9 points, uh, Galadrim Warriors uh, first up here, 5 fight. Uh, it's pretty good, only 3, three strength, but 5 fight is uh, really useful against other infantry. Uh, many infantry units will only have like fight 3. Uh, but the elves are uh, obviously uh, a peg up from your usual pleb. Heavy armor and elven main hand and halves were included in the war gear. Warhorns, banners, elf bows, shields and spears for options. And they're counters as woodland creatures. Courage 5 base, but you can upgrade them to have courage 6 if you make them to a Galadrian guard or whatever it's called. If you have them in Caliborns or uh, Galadriel's uh, warband. Then we have Galadrian knights, so also fight 5 obviously. Defense 5, 1, attack 1, wound, uh, 5 courage for 18 points. And they have the heavy armor, elven made sword and armored horse included in the war gear. Very useful to have armored horses. You don't want to have uh, your knights dismounted. Banners, elf bows, and shields for options, and the expert rider Fleetfoot and Woodland Creature Special. God of the Galadrian Courts are next up. 12 points each, so very expensive infantry, obviously, but they have fight six. Same strength throw, three, and they have defense five with that heavy armor, so not all that tanky, uh, but they have at least six courage. And woodland creatures, obviously, and have the active Kara Skaladon fighting style. The fighting style of the god of the Galadrim court is among the most impressive in Middle Earth. In addition to normal rules for pikes, god of the Galadrim court may also use the rules for shielding. The usual restrictions for shielding still apply, chiefly that a god of the Galadrim court that is shielding cannot be supported by another model, not even by another god of the Galadrim court. So, yeah, kind of have to keep that in mind. Then we have Wood Elf Warriors, really nice models, uh, 8 points each, 5 fight, uh, defense 3 only though, and you can't really upgrade it to be any better, so very frail. But they can do parry with their spears at least, so there is something to buff up their defense. Um, they can take banners, elf both throwing daggers and Wood Elf Spears for options, and have those elven made hand and half swords, which are obviously very useful, included in the war gear, and also elven cloaks and all. Obviously, counters as woodland creatures. They have wood elf sentinels, 25 points for each. And they are no heroes, but they are still 25 points for infantry, which are very expensive, obviously. Five fight, and uh, defense three only, two attacks, one wound, five courage. And they have elven made swords, elf bows, and elven cloaks included in the war gear. Uh, woodland creatures, of course, enchanting song active special rule. A sentinel may sing one song each turn, provided they are not engaged in combat. These function exactly like mag magic powers, except that they are automatically cast without spending wheel and cannot be resisted. And they can cast the following songs the Hymn of Elbreth with a range of 12. This beautiful song raises the spirits of the target model. The target friendly model will automatically pass all the courage tests for the remainder of the turn. 
Elda Mar Madrigal. Uh, rage 12, the target, target enemy model must immediately take a courage test. If the test is passed, nothing happens. If the test is failed, the target model falls under the control of the opposing player, who may then move it it up to its maximum move, even if it has already moved that turn. This move cannot be used to enter an enemy's control zone, dismount, lay down, perform an action that would cause harm to a target, such as jumping off a cliff, etc., or anything that would require the model to roll a d6, such as jump test. Affected models may move no further that turn. And last up, we have the Lay of Gondolin, uh, the past fallen city of the Noldrin in uh, Beleriand. This somber verse recalls the mighty elf city of Gondolin, a name fit to freeze the hearts of evil beings. If the sentinel sings this song, they cause terror until the end of the turn. So that does something for your defense, uh, that enemies have to roll courage tests to charge them, makes them slightly more tanky, obviously, but... Uh, uh, they seem like a bit of a swing and a miss unit for such an expensive cost with so, so low defense and just one word. Yeah, so that's it for Lothlorien. So it's a, a slightly shorter list than the uh, Rivendell list, uh, but certainly some interesting picks here. I think Celeborn is a great fighter. Uh, Galadriel, Galadriel obviously a great spellcaster. Uh, Rumil seems very promising and Haldir can be good, but you have to kind of take the upgrades to make him good. Then we have just regular captains, which are always solid picks. Stormcallers, not sure about the Stormcallers. I think their defense is too low uh, with just two wounds and so little fate. Um, seems like, like they could be a waste of, of your money, but I mean the, the basic infantry and uh, Cavalry is very good for the elf lists with those fight five is uh, they are very strong Not sure about the wood elf units though um, uh, But maybe I haven't played them so I don't really know but just at the top of my head I, I think they seem a bit weak for such expensive uh, points value so uh, but that is it for the uh, Lothlorien list. That, let's just brief over the short list that we have next up here. We have Fangorn. At the close of the Third Age, much of Middle-earth is controlled by a handful of great kingdoms. There are, however, many of the p other powers within Middle-earth lurking within the forests and vales and avoiding the wars and conflicts of other realms. Of these ancient lands, lands Fangorn is by far the oldest. Within the bowels of this great forest dwells the Ents, the tree shepherds of Middle-earth, the ants often resemble the very trees they live amongst, a fact that has often led them to be confused with the trees themselves. The ants have lived in Middle-earth since the dawn of the world and once walked among the trees of all the great forests. However, in the dwindling years of the Third Age, they are few in number and reside only within Fangorn. This army may include Treebeard and ants. <laughs> and then we have the army bonus. <laughs> Ent models from this army list gain the fearless special rule. Additionally, Ent's models are completely unaffected by any magical powers or special rules that would prevent them from moving or move them against their will. The only exception is that they will still take the hit from a sorcerer's blast, but would suffer no further effects. Additionally, Ent's models are completely unaffected by the nature's wrath and wrath of brain and magical powers. So you can't flush them away. Then we have the very short list here. First up, Treebeard for 190 staggering points. He's an ant, he's a monster, he's an infantry and a hero of legend with a move of 6 only, which seems a bit f weird to be fair. And fight 8, strength 8, defense 8, 3 attacks, 3 wounds, 7 courage, 3 might, 6 will and 3 fate. He has the war gear, roots and branches and can take the strike, strength and defense heroic actions and he can take an option to have Marion Pippin on his back and with a passive rule Marion Pippin, if that option is taken both Marion Pippin will ride into battle op upon Treebeard they will use their profile from the Fellowship Army list, see page 10 but will count as being on, uh, from the Fangorn Army list for all intents and purposes all of this will not give Treebeard the cavalry keyword. A Marion Pippin counts as passengers upon Treebeard, with the exception that enemy shooting or attacks may not target them. Whilst upon Treebeard, Marion Pippin may still use their throw stone special rule, using their own strength and strength uh, and range, even if Treebeard has moved this turn without suffering the minus one penalty for moving and shooting. Should they dismount, Marion Pippin may remount Treebeard by moving into base contact with him. 
He causes terror. He can throw stones, which are kind of a lot more powerful than Merry Pippins. Because they have a range of 18 and a strength of 10. And he's also, obviously, very much a woodland creature. And he has the bludgeon brutal power attack. Ends are not adverse to picking up their enemies and using them to bludgeon others that threaten them. Select one enemy model in the fight to be picked up by the end and become the bludgeon. If the model is a cavalry model, the rider is picked up and immediately dismounted. This model cannot be a monster. Select another model in the fight for the end to hit with the bludgeon. Both the target and the bludgeon suffers one strength, eight hit. If the target is slain, the enemy may pick another target to repeat the process again. This may be done repeatedly until the either... The end fails to slay a target, or they are no more eligible targets to choose. Should the bludgeon survive, they will be knocked prone. Note that the end may keep using the bludgeon even if the bludgeon is slain. Then we have Warriors of Fangorn, 120 points. They are kind of just basically the same, but just pegged down. They are fight 7, same strength, same defense, 3 attacks, 3 wounds, 6 courage. Uh, they also cause terror and can throw the same stones, and uh, they also have that bludgeon. So they are just slightly, slightly weaker uh, in terms of uh, no heroics, basically, and no heroic actions, but uh, and one lower fate and one lower courage as well. So, yeah, that's it for, for the Forest of Fangorn, obviously. And then you have the Misty Mountain list, which is also a very short list, so I'm gonna just brief over it here. High up in the Misty Mountains roots the great eagles of Middle-earth. Largely indifferent to the squabbles of the world below their perch, the eagles are noble and proud birds that rarely involve themselves with the goings-on of the wider world. These majestic creatures nonetheless possess an incredible intellect and a predatory fierceness seldom found in combination with each other. This army may include Gwaihir and great eagles, so equally short as the Fangor list. The army bonus is as follows. The eagles are coming. Eagle models from this army is gained a plus one to their strength on a turn in which they charged. So very useful. Heroes of the Misty Mountain are only one. Gwaihir, he is 150 points of hero legend. He has a move of three, but he has fly, so he can just move ten, or even twelve, I think. Fight eight, strength six. Defense 8, 2 attacks, 3 wounds, 6 courage, 3-3-3 three, three, three for heroics, armed with claws and beak. You can do the heroic strike, strength and defense, special heroic actions, and has the fly, monstrous charge and the terror special rule. Monstrous charge means that if he wins fight versus cavalry, even they will be knocked prone, not only infantry. He is lord of the eagles, uh, which means only eagle and wizard models may benefit. From Gwaiir's Standfast, or benefit from this, his heroic actions. Um, then we have the regular Great Eagles for 100 points. Fight 7 uh, instead of 8. Strength 6, same there. Defense 8, same, same there. 2 attacks, same there. 3 wounds, same there. 6 courage, same there. But no heroics. And Fly, Monster's Charge, and Terror is in place as well. So that's it for today. We had the Lothlorien list, we had the Fango list, and last up we have the Misty Mountain list here. Very short list, so just brief over as to get things done here. So if you have enjoyed this RV walkthrough and this RV focus series as a whole, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button as to not miss out on any further comment, and uh, leave a comment, why don't you, on your favorite list. Is it anyone of the ones I talked about today? or something I am yet to talk about maybe. Take care.